Coming to us live as well from our headquarters in Stella Road here in Johannesburg is to give us more insight on BRICS is uh, Catherine Grant. She's the head of economic diplomacy program at SIA. Good to have you with us, uh, Catherine. Perhaps if we pick up on the issue of bilateral trade, we heard from Patrice Monsepa a moment ago that since the establishment of the Business Council that we have seen increased trade between uh, the, the performance of BRICS uh, alliances. Surely this has set us on a positive note. Yes, absolutely. It's always a good thing to hear that uh, trade is increasing. Uh, the, the reality, however, about BRICS trade is that uh, it remains pretty much a hub-and-spoke relationship. Uh, where China is at the heart of, of BRICS trade for all of the other members, including South Africa. Uh, what would be better to hear from my point of view is if we could see trade increasing between Brazil, Russia, India and South Africa, leaving Ch China out of the equation. Why would that be important, Catherine? Because that's, that's greater diversification of our markets and it would also show that we are um, really building on this group that we have now called the BRICS which has been around for about five or six years and uh, it, it would be a sign of greater linkages happening between people like Patrice Motsepe and other business leaders uh, and that we are addressing some of the barriers that the private sector faces when they're trying to trade between these emerging economies. Catherine, more importantly, shouldn't there be more focus on synergies between the mandates that the different business council leaders have? Because uh, reading tweets from Nozipo earlier on, you notice that China wants to focus more on renewable energy. India has its own mandate with regard to agriculture. Uh, are these all in sync with what the other BRICS nations want to achieve? Yeah, that's a very good point because um, I've had a lot of experience in working with business councils over the years and uh, it's always difficult when you have more than two players in particular because you're going to get every member coming with a, uh, you know, a certain agenda that they want to pursue and a lot of that agenda also depends on the individual business leaders involved as well. So you may find that renewable energy for example is of particular interest to one or two large players that belong to the business council but is not of broader interest. What I would hope to see coming out of uh, business council meetings like this is uh, clear messages on the barriers that impact on the private sector broadly. Things like, for example, the movement of business people. It's been a hot topic in South Africa lately. Yeah. Visas for people to travel between the BRICS countries. That would be something that would benefit not only your big players, your big state-owned enterprises, but also your smaller and medium guys that are looking to set up trading relationships as well. Something else that's a hindrance to uh, business overall is labor. And uh, we know that that's a key concern here in South Africa with the ongoing strikes. So the, pres the presence there of uh, Zuelin Zimavavi together with other union members, uh, is that a positive as well? That's very interesting actually because uh, you've traditionally seen the BRICS being a fairly closed group so far. Um, you've got the Business Council as one of those structures. You have a Think Tanks Council as, as another one which is, is your academic research institutions coming together. But we haven't seen the sort of proliferation, if you like, of um, civil society gatherings that, that we had, for example, under IBSA where you had India, Brazil and South Africa working together. And there you had a lot more in cooperation happening. Uh, between groups like the labor union movement. So I think that that's a bit of a shift this year that we're seeing uh, in the BRICS and I think it's a good thing. Uh, you've got to of course avoid a proliferation of forums just for the sake of having a, a BRICS forum. Uh, so it would be very interesting to hear where for example uh, the labor movement could actually see common ground between these five countries. Catherine, something else that has come through quite strongly from this BRICS summit is the domicile of the development bank that will be established. And as Nozipo brought up the, uh, the leadership role there, uh, who might be the influence or the president of that bank? Is this a, a convenient power play for whoever sits at the helm and the country that hosts the development bank? Uh, yes, it's, it's, it's very interesting how this has become the focus because um, I think that certainly from a South African perspective and more broadly an African point of view, things like what the BRICS Development Bank will do is probably going to be more important in the long run. You know, how are they going to spend the money? Are we going to see it being made available to other African countries, for example, to fund infrastructure? But of course, um, things like where the BRICS Bank is located is important because it will be the first institutional structure of the group. It will be the first sort of physical presence, if you like, of, of BRICS because BRICS BRICS has no address right now. It uh, barely has a website, quite frankly. So having some sort of physical uh, manifestation of the organization or the grouping is going to be critical. Uh, if 
if I was to take a bet, my money's on Shanghai, um, quite frankly. I've heard the, the comments coming from Minister Rob Davies and others in the last few days, but um, I think the reality is that the power balance in the BRICS, as I mentioned in, uh, when we were talking about trade, is very much still in favour of China on a lot of things. And I would see China either taking uh, the location of the new development bank or the presidency in the first uh, round. Um, of course, the presidency is envisaged to be rotational and that it would in fact move uh, perhaps every five years, which uh, I think is a probably a democratic concession, if you like, uh, to the power structures that you'll see in place around the bank. Mm. Catherine, just to close off with, so often we have meetings like this, the BRICS Summit for the sixth time, you have the World Economic Forum, which takes place on a variety of uh, platforms. Are we seeing progress being made with such gatherings, in particular when it comes to this BRICS Summit? I think we do. Uh, I mean... <laughs> You, you don't see a lot of very concrete deals coming out of things like the BRICS Summit. Um, we are going to hopefully see one or two in the next uh, few hours and maybe into tomorrow around things like the New Development Bank, which is great. But the reality is that, that these gatherings are about diplomacy. They are about relationship building. And it's incredibly important in the long run. It's, it's very important for uh, President Zuma to be able to interact with leaders of, of, of the world's largest economies and to have a personal relationship developing over time is invaluable in diplomatic terms.